यशोध नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुन तीरवन जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरी वरदारी जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरी वरदारी यशोद नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुन तीरवन जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरी वरधारी जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरी जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरी वरदारी यशोद नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुन तीरवन चारी जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरी वरधारी हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम राम हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जय प्रभु पद जय प्रभु पद जय प्रभु पद शिल प्रभु पद प्रभु पद प्रभु पद प्रभु पद जय प्रभु पद प्रभु पद प्रभु पद प्रभु पद जय जय प्रभु पद जय प्रभु पद प्रभु पद प्रभु पद जय प्रभु पद शिल प्रभुपाद की जय ओम विष्णुपाद परम हंस प्रवेश का आचार्य अष्टोत्तर शत श्री श्रीमाद हिस्स डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी शिल प्रभुपाद की 
जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिवेजकाचार्य अष्टोत्तर शत हिस्स डिवाइन ग्रेस एसी भक्ति एसी भक्ति भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गोस्वामी महाराज प्रभुपाद की नाम आचार्य श्री हरिदास ठाकुर की प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवास दि गौर भक्त वृंद की श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपिना श्याम कुन राधा कुन गिरी गोवर्धन की वृंदावन धाम की मथुरा धाम की नवदीप मायापुर धाम की जगनतपुरी क्षेत्र धाम की गंगमय यमुनामय की तुलसी देवी भक्ति देवी की साम वेद भक्त वृंद की गौ प्रेमानंदे All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories, all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Shri Guru and Shri Gauranga. Thank you all for attending today's Shri Mad Bhagavatam class. We'll be reciting from the tenth chapter, ah, uh, tenth canto, fifty-fourth chapter, verses twenty-seven to thirty-four. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नष्ट भद्रेशु नित्यं भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ठिकी कृष्णया वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय नंद गोपाकुमाराय गोविंदय नमो नम एचाशकलपुंस कृष्णस्तु भगवान्वयं इंद्ररी वैकुम लोक मृडयती युगे युगे So I'll ch- chant from verse 27 to t- 33, and then we can chant together the 34th verse. I can't see. Ashtabhi chaturo vahan dhvabhyam sutam dhvajam trivi sa chanya dhanuradhaya krishnam vivyada panchabhi. The Lord struck Rukmi's four horses with eight arrows. His chariot driver with two. And the chariot's flag with three. Rukmi grabbed another bow and struck Lord Krishna with five arrows. Twenty-eight. Taista dita shaura gaistu chitche da dhanu rajuta punaranya du padatta tadya pachinna dhavya ya. Although hit by these many arrows, Lord Achuta again broke Rukmi's bow. Rukmi picked up yet another bow, but the infallible Lord broke that one to pieces as well. Twenty-nine. परिक्रम पतिष्ठम शूलम चरमासी शक्ति तोमर यदायुधम आदत्ता तत्सव सोचिधरी आयरन ब्लजन ब्लजन थ्री पॉइंटेड स्पीयर स्वॉर्ड एंड शील्ड पाइक जैवलिन वॉट एवर वेपन रुक्मी पिकट अप लॉर्ड हरी स्मैश्ड इट टू बिट्स थर्टी तथो रथा दवा प्लुत खड्गपाणीर्जिघांसया कृष्णम अभ्यद्रवत्क्रुद्धा पटंगा इव पावकम देन रुक्मी लीप डाउन फ्रॉम हिज चैरियट एंड स्वॉर्ड इन हैंड रश्ड फ्यूरियसली टुवर्ड कृष्ण टू किल हिम लाइक अ बर्ड फ्लाइंग इन टू द विंड थर्टी वन तस्य चापत तह खड्गम तिलशर्मचेशु भी छिवा सिंह आद दे तिग्म रुक्मीण हंत मुद्यत As Rukmi attacked him, the Lord shot arrows that broke Rukmi's sword and shield into small pieces. Krishna then took up his own sharp sword and prepared to kill Rukmi. Thirty-two. Drishva Bhartra Vado Yogam Rukmi Ni Bhaya Vivala Patitva Pada Yor Bhartur Uvaja Karunang Sati. Seeing Lord Krishna ready to kill her brother, 
Saintly Rukmini was filled with alarm. She fell at the husband's feet and piteously spoke as follows. 33. Sri Rukmini Vacha Yogeshwara Prameyatmam Deva Deva Jagatpate Antung Narasi Kalyana Brataram Me Mahabuja. Sri Rukmini said, O controller of all mystic power, immeasurable one, Lord of Lords, Master of the universe, O all, all, O all auspicious and mighty armed one, please do not kill my brother. And now, 34. Shri Shuka Vacha. Shri Shuka Vacha. Shri Shuka Vacha. Taya Paritrasa Vikampitangaya. Taya Paritrasa Vikampitangaya. Taya Paritrasa Vikampitangaya. Shuchava Shushyan Mukaruddha Kanthaya. Shuchava Shushyan Mukaruddha Kanthaya. Shuchava Shushyan Mukaruddha Kanthaya. Katarya Visrang Sita Hema Malaya. Katarya Visrang Sita Hema Malaya. Katarya Visrang Sita Hema Malaya. Grihita Pada Karunonya Vartata. Grihita Pada Karunonya Vartata. Grihita Pada Karunonya Vartata. Shri Shukya Vacha. Taya Paritrasa Vikampitangaya. Shuchava Shuchyan Mukaruddha Kanthaya. Katarya Visrang Sita Hema Malaya. Grihita Pada Karunonya Vartata. Shri Shuka Vacha. Taya Paritrasa Vikampitangaya. Shuchava Shuchyan Mukaruddha Kanthaya. Katarya Visrang Sita Hema Malaya. Grihita Pada Karunonya Vartata. Please chant. Daya Paritrasa Vikampitangaya. Grihita Pada Karunonya Varitata. At least two more. Shri Shuka Vacha. Taya Paritrasa Vikampitangaya. Sujavashun Mukarutta Kantaya. Katarya Vishrang Sita Hema Malaya. Vita Pada Karunonya Varitata. Shri Shuka Vacha. Taya Paritrasa Vikampitangaya. Shuchava Shuchan Mukarutta Kantaya. Katarya Vishrang Sita Hema Malaya. Vita Pada Karunonya Varitata. Matajis. Shri Shuka Vacha. Taya Paritrasa Vikampitangaya. Shuchava Shuchan Mukarutta Kantaya. 
तात्र्य विश्रंसित हे ममालया गृहीत पाद करुणो न्यवर्तता टू मोर प्लीज श्री शुकवाचा तया परित्रा सविकम पिटांगया रुचाव शुचन करुत कंठया कातर्य विश्रंसित हे ममालया विहीत पाद करुणो न्यवर्तता Word for word translation. Shri Shukha Vacha. Shukadev Goswami said, Taya, by her, Paritrasa, in total fear, Vikampita, trembling, Angaya, whose limbs, Shucha, out of sorrow, Avashushyat, drying up, Mukha, whose mouth, Ruddha, and choked, Kanthaya, whose throat, Katarya, in her agitation, Visrangsita, disheveled, disheveled, sorry, Hema, golden, Malaya, whose necklace, Grihita, held, Padaha, his feet, Karunaha, compassionate, Nyavartata, he desisted. Translation by the disciples of his Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Shukdev Goswami said, Rukmini's utter fear caused her limbs to tremble and her mouth to dry up, while her throat choked up out of sorrow. And in her agitation, her golden necklace scattered. She grasped Krishna's feet and the Lord, feeling compassionate, desisted, purport. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti quotes the worldly rule that one's sister is the personification of mercy. Dayaya bhagini murtihi. Even though Rukmini was wicked and was opposed to his sister's best interest, Rukmini was compassionate toward him, and the Lord shared her compassion. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuru Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namah Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayang Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandehang Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Nashnavangscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatang Sahagana Raghunathang Vitantang Sajeevam Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padang Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhang Vitangscha हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगतपते गोपेशा गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमस्ते तातकांचन गोरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमामि हरि पिए वांचा कल्पात रूप्यश्चा कृपा सिंधु भये वचा पतितानां पावने प्यो वैष्णवे प्यो नमो नमः Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare 
हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे थैंक यू ऑल फॉर असेंबलिंग हियर बिफोर आई स्टार्ट स्पीकिंग आई वुड लाइक टू सीक ब्लेसिंग्स ऑफ ऑल द सीनियर वैष्णवस हियर व्हिच इज एवरीबॉडी हम व्हाट एवर आई स्पीक टुडे इज सिंपली गोइंग टू बी बेस्ड ऑन व्हाट आई हैव हर्ड आई हैव नथिंग टू से फॉर माय ओन कंकक्शन और understanding i have zero so please bless me that i may speak everything in the line of guru shastra and parampara and if there's anything that i say wrong or doesn't align with your personal views or anything please forgive me so ye yatha mam prapadyante tams tatheva bhajam yaham mama vartmanu vartante manushya pata sarvashah as all surrender unto me i reward them accordingly Everyone follows my path in all respects O son of Pritha So Krishna says this to Arjuna in the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita and in the purport Shri Prabhupada writes that God is everywhere and everyone is searching for him but in in different manifestations and different aspects Krishna the supreme personality of Godhead is partially realized in two features and fully realized in his Bhagavan feature So the partial feature as the Brahma Jyoti and the Paramatma dwelling in every every particle these are the two um incomplete realizations um however Krishna is the object of everyone's realization and anyone and everyone is satisfied according to his own desire to have him this is what Shri Prabhupada writes in the purport and then krishna he rewards all living entities equally according to their different intentions i mean intensities and intentions to serve him the impersonalists the brahmavadis and the mayavadis as well as the yogis they cannot understand the personality of godhead they cannot reach the personal aspect of godhead and their highest understanding of god remains as either a formless form or the some blue light or the paramatma situated inside their heart and because of this incomplete understanding they are unable to understand how god how krishna can descend onto earth and act like a common man play with the common men and perform activities just like common men but devotees they are fully able to understand these intricacies of of krishna's leela and how each leela is a symbolic representation to something higher the so, shrimad bhagavatam mahabharat ramayan the other puranas the upanishads all these innumerable scriptures they all lead to various pastimes of krishna and out of all these puranas itihasas upanishads shrimad bhagavatam is the prime is a ripe fruit of all vedic scriptures it is the spotless purana and it is also the commentary on the vedanta sutra as written by um shila vyasdev so it describes krishna's past times with his intimate devotees with his servants with his parents with the gopis and numerable other devotees and the best part of shrimad bhagavatam is that it sheds light in detail about these past times and the mood of how one can understand the personality of godhead in person so this personal aspects of lord the past times of the lord are only for devotees to understand the supreme personality of godhead is the supreme pure param brahma parang dhama pavitram paramam bhavan purusham shashvatam divyam adi devam ajam bibhum so krishna he is the absolute truth parang brahma he is the ultimate abode parang dhama he is the purest pavitram he is eternal shashvatam he is transcendental divyam He is the original person Adi Devam the unborn Ajam and he is the greatest Vibhum so whatever he does because of these qualities because Arjuna has realized these qualities of Krishna we can also understand that whatever Krishna does is on the highest level of transcendence and purity but whatever we do is on the highest level of pervertedness and ignorance this material world that we are living in that we think is so wonderful is actually nothing but a reflection of the pure spiritual world whatever we see here however great it may be is nothing but the exact opposite of what the spiritual world has and we have no idea or no conception of it because we have no taste for for krishna or his pastimes so whatever krishna is doing in the spiritual world 
Because of this world being perverted, we are trying to imitate him in our own perverted way. And we are basically trying to do nothing but be Krishna. We fail to understand that in this material world, we cannot be the center of anything at any point. There's always someone else who will become the center the next minute. Someone will always be richer than you. Someone will always be poorer than you. Someone will be more beautiful than you. Someone will be not so beautiful than you. But in the spiritual world, everything is about Krishna. Everything rotates around Krishna. He's the epicenter of all transcendence, all happiness, all eternity, and all bliss. But we, we are hankering for that, but we just don't know how to access that, that happiness, that bliss, that eternity. In the spiritual world, every thought is about Krishna. Every conversation is about him. And every action is for Krishna. We, in this material world, we think everything should be for us. Everyone should think about us. Me, 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 I, 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 me, myself, and I. But this is why we're unable to imagine a world where everything is for one person. Everything is for Krishna. We just cannot imagine because we're so covered with ignorance and envy towards Krishna. We can't even imagine how there's a whole spiritual world, much, much bigger than this small material world we live in, where only one person is the center of everything. So in, in, this, in the same way, we've been reading the 54th chapter of the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, and this pastime of Rukmini, Rukmi, and Krishna, and all the other um, princes and kings of various kingdoms, it's basically like a movie. It's, a, it's like a Bollywood movie or a Hollywood movie. More like a Bollywood movie because there's a whole aspect of element of, of over-the-top or melodramatic that's involved. We try, we, that's why our movies are three, three and a half hours long, whereas Hollywood movies generally tend to be much shorter. So Krishna, he's the, he's the director, he's the writer, he's the producer, he's the actor, he's everything in his movies. That is his leelas. He... Everything is around him. He knows exactly how the pastime will start, how the pastime will end, what devotees will be part of it, and what devotees will not be part of it. So this pastime, like um, many devotees have spoken about this in the past few verses, but I'll repeat because that's parampara. This pastime of Rukmini writing a letter to Krishna, this is the beginning of the original love letter. Nowadays, there's so many couples, young boys and girls are writing love letters, well, you, they used to write letters, but now they're sending big, big WhatsApp messages to, to convey their love to the other person. But we don't even understand what love is, so how can we possibly express our love to someone? But Rukmini, because she's an eternal associate of the Lord, she has, she's fully qualified to write a love letter to the Lord. And also, the Lord has also written a love letter to his gopis and sent it to Uddhava. So in this way... Krishna and Rukmini are the original or the OG letter writers of, of love. And um, adventure, action, horror, whatever genre of movies one can you think of, all of these are covered under Krishna's pastimes. Just in Srimad Bhagavatam, just within 18,000 verses, Vyasadeva has covered the highlight, the, the most significant pastimes of Krishna that that cover all of these pastimes of different genres. And Krishna is so intelligent, he's so smart, he's, well, he's in our heart after all, so he knows us much better than um, we know ourselves. And he knows exactly what we're desiring, what we want, what we need. So he knows what our perverted minds are looking for, what our minds are hankering for. He knows that all of us fallen souls are looking for love, for romance, for sex, all these things. So he performs his pastimes for, and helps us to understand that what we are hankering for is not actually the absolute truth. There's much more to it. There's the purest form. And he performs his leelas for us to understand that. So unfortunately, on the other hand, those people who do not take to Krishna consciousness or don't have access to his pastimes, they're left in the darkness. They're reading mundane newspapers about mundane topics, people dying, people killing each other, bombs blasting, tunnels exploding, ships running into bridges, so many things. And they're reading magazines about so many different celebrities who have done so many big, big things, so-called big, big things. 
and they're watching, going to the cinemas to watch movies of all sorts of different topics, but they're missing the essence, they're missing Krishna. Without Krishna, even if you add 1,000 zeros, if you don't have that one before the zeros, it's a waste of time. Shama evahi kevalam. And, we, and these people, they don't understand it. So, because we are so fallen, we can't see who we are. And because we can't see who we are, we don't know what our activities are. We don't know what we're supposed to do. We don't know how we're supposed to engage ourselves. That's why we see we end up engaging ourselves in so many ridiculous activities throughout our day. And like this, we spend our whole lives, day after day, sunset, sunrise and sunset go by. But Nothing improves, nothing changes. We're always hankering for that little bit more, little bit more. I'm almost there. I almost, I'm almost there. And these movies, these magazines, these newspaper articles, the editorials, all these things, they're just chasing a complete lie. They're telling us the happiness exists, but it doesn't. So whatever pastimes of any genre one can imagine, conspiracy, there's a Shamantaka jewel pastime, loving affairs, there's a gopis, there, for friendship, there's Arjuna and the Gopas. For um, parental loving affection, there's Mother Yashoda and Devaki. And for Grihastha life or married life, there are the queens of Dwaraka. So we have to get absorbed in these pastimes to purify our minds. And only then we'll be able to find our way back to Godhead. And it's not so easy to, sounds easy to say it in theory, but practicing is only for those elevated souls who are constantly engaged in Krishna consciousness. In, through Krishna Katha, by listening, by reading, by chanting, by the, all the nine processes of bhakti, whatever way suits them. And on the other hand, people like Rukmi and his entourage, like Shalva, Shishupal, um, what's his name? Tantavakra, um, Pondrak, all these kings and princesses, they are all envious of Krishna because their hearts are so covered with poison in the form of envy that they can't understand that Krishna is a person, that he is the supreme, supreme Brahman, the supreme personality of Godhead. They just don't know because they're constantly breeding contempt in their hearts. And whatever bad there is, they only see that, they don't see the good in Krishna's qualities. And Rukmi and Shishupal, for example, they were childhood friends. They grew up together. They used to spend a lot of time together. So birds of the same feather, they flocked together. And in the same way, because they were always associating together, their mutual envy towards Krishna grew over the years and turned into hatred. And because association is key, Shishupal, as he was the most wretched person, Rukmi also took his characteristics and became just as wretched. There's, I heard this from one of the lectures in Chaupati where Shishupal, when he was born, usually when kids are born, they usually utter inaudible words like gaga, ga, goo, goo, mama, papa, whatever. But Shishupal, he, the first things that came out of his mouth were curse words and obnoxious things, nothing pleasant that you would expect to hear from a baby infant. So, Shishupal was so wretched, he was able to convince Rukmi and all the other princes and kings like Jarasan to, to help him um, uh, win Rukmini's hand and heart in, in her swayamvar. Rukmini, she's the eternal associate of Krishna. Now Krishna, he's very intelligent. He, he's so intelligent that there's, every pastime has a certain point where it starts and when it ends. They're eternal. But for us, they start at some point on some page of the Bhagavatam and they end on a certain page of the Bhagavatam. So right now, on the, starting from the 52nd chapter of the Bhagavatam, 10th canto, it was time for Rukmini's Leela with Krishna. So if Krishna doesn't want his eternal associate to realize that they are his eternal associate, then that particular eternal associate will not realize that they are the eternal associate. But if, when Krishna wants and when he thinks the time is ready, then he'll give them the remembrance because seated in their hearts and he'll tell them, okay, you're my eternal associate and now's the time for you to step forward and join me in my Leela. And Rukmini, in this way, we can see that she was only 16 years old. She was a little girl. She wasn't even an adult. She had never seen Krishna, never seen a picture of him, nothing. 
She had only heard, she had only heard from all the various sages, the elevated souls who were visiting her father's kingdom, Bhishmaka, in um, the kingdom of Vaidharva. So there, just from hearing, she developed this strong attachment for Krishna and she decided in her heart that Krishna was going to be the only one who she was going to give her heart to and no one else. No Shishupal, no Shalva, no Jarasan, none of them. And um, Mahaprabhu says that out of the nine limbs of bhakti, uh, hearing and chanting are the two main ones. And out of hearing and chanting, hearing is the most important one. So Rukmini had perfected the art of hearing about Krishna. And because of this perfection, she was able to fully surrender herself in her heart, mind, intelligence, body, everything to Krishna. And this is, and by the time all of this was, she had, by the time she realized all of this, it had come time for her to be part of Krishna's Leela now. And one interesting thing is that whatever Krishna does is his Leela. And whatever we do is our karma. We cannot ever say, oh, I had my Leela yesterday, I did this, this and this, and people should write about it. People do it, but they shouldn't be doing such things. But Krishna, whatever he does, it's Leela. If he's sleeping, it's Shayan Leela. If he's swinging on a swing, it's Julan Leela. If he's eating, it's Bhojan Leela. So like this, anything and everything Krishna does becomes Leela. And Rukmini is, becomes part of his, um, I forgot the Sanskrit for it, but the kidnapping Leela. So, um, because Rukmini had, was the mic working? Rukmini was, uh, uh, she was not a villager. She was not a village girl like the gopis. She was royalty. She was a kshatriya. Um, whatever she wanted, she always got. She was never hesitant to back down from what she wanted. She was never like, oh, okay, if I don't get this today, no problem. No, I want it, I will get it. So, with this attitude and determination, she sent for, she took the risk and sent a very confidential letter in the hands of a trustworthy brahmana and sent him all the way to Dwarka to convey a personal message to Lord Krishna. And on the other hand, we can see that the gopis, they're constantly worried about the elders in Vrindavan. They're, they're trying to look at Krishna, but they're also keeping an eye on the elders because they know if the elders suspect something, that they're all in trouble. And Dina Bandhu Prabhu, in one of his online lectures, he talks about a poem that Radharani sings that, she says, I only get to look at Krishna with one eye because my other eye is always on my elders. So in, on the other hand, Rukmini, she doesn't care about these things because she's a princess. And what princess has to worry about anyone else? She'll do what she wants. And she has made up her mind and there's no going back. She will not take a no for an answer. If Krishna says she will not accept her, then she says in the 37th verse of the 52nd chapter that, I have fixed my shameless mind upon you, Krishna. And then she threatens Krishna further, saying that, if I cannot obtain your mercy, I shall simply give up my vital force, which will have become weak from the severe penances I will perform. So she's actively threatening Krishna in the letter, saying, if you don't accept me, these are the consequences that are going to happen. So Krishna, of course, because he's so compassionate, he decides to fulfill the desires of his eternal associate and immediately tells the Daruka to get his chariot ready. And immediately he sets out for Vidarbha, the kingdom of uh, Rukmini Devi. And his four transcendental horses are just as transcendental as Krishna. They can travel almost, actually, faster than the speed of mind. There's four of them. Shaibya is the green one. Then there's Sugriva, who is the grayish one, who looks like ice. Then there's Mega Pushpa, who looks like a blackened uh, cloud. And then there's Bal Balahaka, who looks like silver. And in these four horses take Krishna a distance of 1,000 miles in less than one day. That's pretty impressive because to, to, to drive 1,000 miles nowadays takes us a long time. It takes at least 15 to 16 hours. But Kr Krishna's horses were able to do this in overnight, basically. And then when he got there, because he knew that um, all the princes were, somehow the word had gone out and all the princes and kings were expecting Krishna Balaram to come, he decided to, to post and make his camp outside the kingdom of Vidarbha in a small town called, um, 
Kunda something. Anyway, Kundi Purna or some Kundinapur, Kundinapur. So that's where he was camped, and he knew, also knew that Rukmini's heart was beating and his her mind was restless, and she was thinking all possible things that reasons why Krishna didn't come to see her yet. So to give her to put her mind at ease, he sent the Brahmana inside the inside Vidarbha and told her told him to tell her that he's here and everything will be okay. And Rukmini. Because she was so nervous, so restless, when she heard this good, this good news from the Brahmana, she was so ecstatic and so grat- grateful due to gratitude for bringing the good news, she couldn't find anything to offer to this Brahmana. So what did she do? She offered her um, prostrated obeisances, basically Panchanga Dandavat. And through this, we can see that Rukmini, although she was a princess of, of royal blood, she had not forgotten her, her upbringing due to proper Vedic culture that her parents set, put forth on her. And um, because this, she offered her obeisances to this Brahmana, and because she is a supreme, what is it? Goddess of fortune, this Brahmana who received her obeisances within a moment received all the prosperity and all auspiciousness there is to achieve in this three worlds, just because Rukmini Devi offered her obeisances to the Brahmana. Now on the other hand, while this Brahmana became rich and was getting all these benedictions, the princes and kings on the other hand, who had come to get uh, Rukmini's hand, they were panicking. They had been waiting for three to four hours outside the Ambika temple where Rukmini was, and finally when she comes out after four, five, three, four hours, they look at her and they all faint. Now. It says in the Bhagavatam that they fainted, and I will take it as it is. So I'm assuming they fainted. So, and then eventually when they woke up, um, they were trying to look at her, they were trying to make eye contact with her, but she wasn't interested. She was not interested in looking at any of them. She was only looking for Krishna's lotus feet. And finally, when Krishna's eyes locked with her eyes, and when they made that eye contact, she was in ecstasy. She was so happy, so relieved, and while she was thinking all of this, in a moment, Krishna grabbed her right hand and put her on his chariot and slowly ambled away, trotted away with Balaram in the front. And all these princes were just standing there looking like, oh, what happened? They were baffled. They didn't know how to react. It happened so, so fast. Krishna is so efficient and has such high efficacy and so swift that these poor princes and kings didn't have any time to react. So when they realized what had happened, they decided, okay, let's become Kshatriyas again and chase down Krishna and bring back Rukmini for our dear Shishupal, who is brokenhearted and crying over here. Which was the condition of Shishupal because he was eagerly waiting to marry Rukmini. But when it didn't happen, he was heartbroken. So these princes, they, they, t- they um, gave chase to Krishna. But Gada and Balaram, Krishna's stepbrother and... Um, his elder brother, they stopped these princesses and broke their chariots and defeated all their armies and everything. And then these princes, they realized, why are we running after Shishupal's to-be wife? What's the point? We're not going to get anything out of it. So why are we wasting energy on it? Let's just go back. So then they go back to Shishupal and, and they start speaking their own Niti Shastra and saying, yeah, it's the, due to the influence of time factor, this, karma, so many things that you didn't get Rukmini. Don't worry. She'll come, someone else will come, better person will come. Don't, don't, don't worry. Somehow Shishupal was convinced and he let go of the thought of having Rukmini as, her, as his wife. And then they moved on. But then our dear Rukmi, the star prince of Vidarbha kingdom, the elder son of Bhishmaka, he decides, I will bring back Rukmini. I am the greatest Kshatriya, I will bring back Rukmini. So he, he starts chasing Krishna down. And then this is when we are... Here in the 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31, 31, 33rd verses. So Krishna is about to kill him. All the weapons of Rukmi have been shattered to pieces. His only thing left is his shield and sword. He starts running at Krishna. Krishna breaks the sword, breaks the shield, and Rukmi is left with nothing. Krishna is about to take the sword and kill him. And that's when Rukmini, the supreme goddess of fortune, she feels compassion on this wretched soul and pleads with Krishna to save his life. Because they spend their whole lives together, their whole childhood was spent together, uh, Rukmini and Rukmi. They're brothers and sisters. Naturally, there will be some affection. So because of this uh, affection, 
being a woman, Rukmini naturally had compassion in her heart. Women generally had to have a compassionate heart, a compassionate attitude. Men are more hard-hearted, they're more logical, they, think, they see things to yes, no, but women, they're kind. And this is one of their divine qualities that women have, and it's also divine quality that Rukmini Devi uh, was um, shining with. And because of this compassion, um, she was able to spare Rukmi's life. So, <clears throat> as she fell at Krishna's feet, she was begging him for forgiveness on behalf of Rukmi. And this humility is a reflection on her wonderful divine qualities. Like she's leading by example, she's showing everyone how an eternal associate of Krishna should behave. Although her brother is almost about to be killed, she is taking the humble position and begging for forgiveness for something she hasn't even done. So these are the qualities of a pure devotee, especially in the non-enviousness. And this shows that she was indeed a true eternal associate of Krishna. Krishna, because he is the ultimate shelter and the supreme shelter of his devotees, if one takes shelter of him, he, has, he will give them protection. Konteya pratijani hi name bhakta pranashyati. O Konteya, declare boldly to the world that my devotee will never perish. So Krishna, he has given his promise in the Bhagavad Gita and he keeps his promise in, um, in this pastime. And one interesting thing is, even if Rukmini did not plead to Krishna to save Rukmi's life or spare his life, Krishna wouldn't have killed Rukmi because in the pages of all the scriptures, there is not a single instance where Krishna has killed anyone who's associated with his devotee. And even if he has killed someone who's associated with the devotee, he's made sure that that particular living entity has, gets a better life, either in, or a better condition in this life, or a better life in his next birth. Like, for example, we have Banasur in, later on in the 10th canto, where he's a devotee of Lord Shiva, and he gets this ridiculous benediction from Lord Shiva, where if he touches anyone's head, they will explode. So Krishna, just because, wait, that was Banasur or? Rikasur. That was Rikasur, sorry. But Banasur also, he had 1,000 arms, and he didn't know what to do with his 1,000 arms. So he was beating down mountains, he was playing the tanda, playing the tumburu for Lord Shiva during his tandav dance. But other than that, he was breaking mountains, walls, stones, bricks, like what a waste of time. So Krishna, when he, when he came to, when he finally confronted Krishna and wanted to fight Krishna, Lord Shiva had to intervene to save Banasur because Krishna was going to kill him. That's what it, he made it seem, but he wasn't actually going to kill him. And he didn't because of Lord Shiva's intervention. In the same way, we have Kaliya, Aghasur, Bakasur, Vritrasur, all these big, big demons were killed. But Kaliya, this huge thousand-headed serpent, was not killed. Why? It's because his wives, the Nagapatnis, they were all devotees, pure devotees of Krishna. So because of their prayers, because of their pleading, Krishna spared the life of Kaliya. He could have killed, he killed Vritrasur, um, Vyomasur, Keshi, Aghasur in seconds. But with Kaliya, he was in his coils for over two hours. He just stayed, what's the word? He stayed fixed. He stayed fixed in Kaliya's coils for two hours and he was shivering, or he looked like he was shivering. But he didn't kill Kaliya. He danced on his head. He made Kaliya's head, his hoods, his dance floor. And Kaliya, because he had red jewels, the floor was lit and Krishna was having fun but he didn't kill Kaliya in the same way Putana Putana uh, in her previous life she was Ratnamala Bali Maharaj's little sister and when Vamandev appeared at the kingdom of Bali Maharaj um, Ratnamala was completely her heart was captured by the beauty of Vamandev and her motherly instincts kicked in and she wanted to uh, feed him milk from her breast but when Vamandev took away everything that Bali Maharaj had, the same Ratnamala got angry and decided she wants, wanted to feed Vamandev poison from her same breast. So Krishna, being the super soul in her heart, knew both her desires. And in the next life, when she came as Putana to kill him, he drank her meal, drank her poison, and in return, sucked her whole vital force, killed her, and gave her the position of a dhatri, or a nurse, in the spiritual world, in, in Golok, which is non different from the position that Yashoda Mai and Devik, Devaki Mai have. Because nurse, after all, is one of the seven mothers, as the scriptures say, as Srila Prabhupada has repeated tons of times. So, our greatest fortune is we can understand from these three examples that, four, 
that our greatest fortune is to be connected to devotees. Even if we cannot become devotees in this life or in the next life or in all of our lives, if we simply stay connected to devotees, then our success is guaranteed. Like Lord Krishna says to Arjuna in the Adi Purana, which Mahaprabhu later stay, recites again in the Madhya Leela of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Ye me bhakta janaha partha, na me bhaktas chate janaha, mad bhaktanam chaye bhaktas, te me bhakta tamamataha. My dear Partha, one who claims to be my devotee is not so. Only a person who claims to be the devotee of my devotee is actually my devotee. So this person, like, uh, we don't even have to be devotees of Krishna. It would be great. Uh, that's the ultimate perfection of life. But if we cannot make that, that step, if we cannot surrender and become a devotee or take to bhakti, we can simply be in association or serve a pure devotee or his devotees. And this... this in Adi Purana, Agni Purana, it states that this is better than serving Krishna directly. The, the Purana states, There might be a doubt about the liberation of a person who is serving Krishna directly, but there is no doubt about the liberation of a person who is serving his devotee. So, in the same way, we have our dear Srila Prabhupada, who is our saving grace, our anchor. And it is our great fortune that we are connected to his divine grace, not just through his instructions, but through his disciples and, his, and their disciples. And there's many pastimes of Srila Prabhupada where he's given so much mercy, so much compassion to all his um, di disciples and their disciples. And there's one example, there's one pastime of Tamal Krishna Maharaj where he was having a dream where, and he, he told his dream to Srila Prabhupada. And in his dream he was saying to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, in my dream I saw Lord Brahma last night and there were all these other demigods, all these devatas, and there were, Lord Brahma was chastising us that we are not qualified, we are so fallen, we are so lonely, we have no qualification, no one can save you. But then somehow I was able to tell him, no, we have Srila Prabhupada, he will save us. And Lord Brahma, when he heard this, he had the biggest smile on his face and he said, yes, that is your only grace. Srila Prabhupada is your saving grace. So upon hearing this, when all the Tamal Krishna Maharaj and all his devotees became ecstatic and the devatas and the demigods, whoever, they were there, they were all clapping in ecstasy. So whatever our spiritual strength may be, whether it be 100%, 200%, 50%, 5%, 0%, if we simply stick to Srila Prabhupada's instructions, if we simply stick to this movement, if we simply stick to this process of bhakti that he has paved for us, that he has made it so simple for us to follow, Srila Prabhupada will accept us at the end, no matter where we stand on the scale of progress of bhakti. And there's a pastime where Srila Prabhupada tells his disciple, now all of you have, should try to become 100% pure. And he opens his eyes and all his disciples are looking with sad faces, 100% pure? Because they know their backgrounds, they don't come from very wonderful backgrounds. So they're all sad and upset. And then Prabhupada, understanding their heart, says, okay, 75%. Still they're dismayed and still looking sad. Okay, Prabhupada says, fine, 50%. Still, the faces haven't changed. And then he says, don't worry, just hold on to my dhoti because I have a key to the back door of Vaikuntha. And this made the devotees happy. In the same way, His Holiness Kadamakana Swami has said numerous times in his lectures that when we go back to the spiritual world, we will be stopped at the gate. They will not let us in. They will tell us we have so much karma left, we have all these desires left. We have to finish all of these desires, burn the karma, and then we can come in. But then, someone in the spiritual world may, may, might say, take compassion on us and say, but they're connected to Srila Prabhupada. Oh, connected to Prabhupada. Well then, come on in. So just because of our connection to Srila Prabhupada, we can enter the spiritual world, go back home back to Godhead, and enjoy the pastimes of Krishna in in the absolute form, how they're supposed to be, not the perverted form like we see in this material world. There will be true love, there's true action, there's true adventure, there's true romance, there's true love letters. Everything is true, everything is wonderful, everything is full of bliss. And we can all have access to it if we simply take to Srila Prabhupada's instructions through his books, through his lectures, through his conversations, through his, through his Lilamrita, through his life, everything. There's so much from Srila Prabhupada that we can follow but we're so busy doing other things that we just don't care. We have so much to do, so much to learn from Prabhupada, but we're not interested. We're that fallen. And we 
don't recognize Srila Prabhupada's importance, but he's a very important personality sent forth by Sri Mahaprabhu himself. And in the Chaitanya Mangal by Lochandas Thakur, there's a few verses that I'd like to chant real quick that talk about Prabhupada being the, the, the Senapati Bhakta of Mahaprabhu. Nama guna sankirtana vaishnavera shakti prakasha karibe ami nija prema bhakti Chanting of the name and qualities of Krishna is the life and energy of the Vaishnavas. I will reveal these activities and rejuvenate pure devotional service unto myself. E mate kali papa kori be sanghara shabe chala age pache na kori vichara In this way, I will destroy all the sins in Kali Yuga. So all of you, my associates, go ahead and take birth on the earthly planet before my advent and don't remain behind. Ebe nama sankirtana tikshna khadgalaya antara sura jivera peli bekatiya Taking the sharp sword of the congregational chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, I will root out and destroy the demonic mentality in the hearts of all the conditioned souls. Yadi papi chadi dharma dure deshe yaya mora senapati bhakta yai betathaya If some sinful people escape and giving up religious principles go to far off countries, then my Senapati Bhakta will come at that time to give them Krishna consciousness. And this is what Srila Prabhupada has done. After years of struggling in India, living in poverty, stricken conditions, in the freezing temple of, um, I forgot the name of it, the one in Keshigat for years, in Radha Damodar temple, he finally made his way to the West, and it was even worse. The conditions were more hellish there. People were nasty. People were doing all sorts of nefarious activities. The conditions were more severe. But he kept going. He, his determination was so strong, so unbridled. One point of the focus he had. And with that, he was able to establish this movement for us. So we should be grateful towards Srila Prabhupada. We should be forever grateful. And we should take advantage of his books, his instructions. Because without his association through these various avenues, we will not make it back to Godhead. We cannot make it back to Godhead on our own strength. We are not qualified. We are nothing. We are absolutely nothing. So let's all take Srila Prabhupada's um, shelter and try to associate more with him. Chant with him, read with him, read his books, listen to him, whatever way works for you. So, yeah. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Um, we have one minute left if Dharmata Prabhu says so. First, because it shows that uh, uh, the nature of a woman. When men are run out of patience, the heart of a woman still has compassion. And we saw this in the life, in Drupadi's situation. Mm. Krishna was determined to kill this devotee. What's his name? Forgot his name. Who Ru was through in the Brahmastra? Shishupa. Oh, um, Ashwatthama. Ashwatthama, 78 years old. So, uh, still he had compassion. Still he had compassion. And here is another example. Still, although Krishna was the enemy of her, her lover, still she has compassion. Prabhupada said, told us that we have to have the heart of a Bengali mother and the courage of a British gentleman. Yeah. Where do you get this from? Where, how do I get the heart of a Bengali You have to get it from your mother. If you have a mother who is a mother and a mother and a mother, you know how to have a heart of a Bengali mother. And if there's no mother, if that element is not there in the family, you become a male chauvinist. No doubt about it. So I'm making this point because I, may, uh, I have seen this in my own family, that my father was in a concentration camp, he was tortured by one man. And my mother knew who that was. He turned by some twist of providence later out to be the very same person who washed the body at my father to put him into the coffin. Myself my, and my brother, our blood was boiling. We were determined to kill this man, not to leave our house because it was in our domain. My mother said, no. He has children. They're innocent. And he has a wife. She's innocent. 
I insist that you let this man go. Only a woman can do that. Nobody else. That's why it's important that we understand our nature. We need ladies, that energy, that female energy. We need male energies. It is an integral part even all the way up to the spiritual world. Otherwise, our movement cannot grow. It is like a family without a mother is like a, a how do you say, dysfunctional family. A religion without a mother, the female element, and we see this in Western religiosity, is male chauvinist. No mercy, the whole history, history of the world is written in blood because this element of Radharani is missing. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Jai. Ki jai. Samaita Bhaktavinda ki jai. Jai.